The next talk is by Kevin Quinn, <laughs> Kevin Porter. <laughs> Looks a lot like him. Uh, yeah, and he's doing the uh, dynamic graph for workflow management in the, in the hub. No, 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 I'm ahead of myself. Federated, huh? Yeah, federated digital object management through persistent identification. Oh. Yeah. Continue on, part two. I confused myself a little, and I think I almost did the presentations in the opposite order because the titles were so similar. Yeah. Um, anyway, uh, so after we've gone through user profile stuff, we want to have the same sort of unique attribution for uh, digital objects. Uh, so now we're going to talk about persistent identification and how we do that in the ICE project. Uh, so I, at this point, shouldn't need to review ICE again, but I at least want to go through the big ugly picture and show you, to kind of just review the use case we went through earlier this morning on why we use persistent identifiers at all. And then we'll talk about the different options and why we use persistent identifiers, uh, why we wouldn't use uh, DOIs or handles, and then talk about our solution a bit, and we'll close out. So again, the big of a picture. And if you look in the bottom left-hand corner, among all the different uh, ICE team developed entities there, you can see the PID server. And that connects, again, directly to the common service bus. Uh, so what are we looking for from persistent identification? Why would we waste our time creating this gigantic index of things at all? Um, it's kind of a pain. Uh, we want to be able to index and map data back and forth between different systems. So we have data that uh, exists in a project in the hub. We have uh, data that exists in Granta. We have data that exists in Plotly, um, and so on. Uh, someone creates a mechanical test that exists in uh, some proprietary software that runs on that machine. Uh, each of those things represent digital objects, the way we're thinking about them. And we want to be able to think of those digital objects as themselves. Um, that's what I mean by a first class data referencing. So the PID represents that data object as itself. Normally when we go looking for things, we look for the web address, or we look through the path in the file system, or something like that. Um, so when you email me, find this on the network drive, you give me the path to the file. That's the idea here. And we don't want that. We don't want uh, these different data objects, because they constantly change where they really exist. Uh, you email it to me, and there's a new version. Now I've uploaded it to the hub. And now there's another new version. And this one exists on Google Drive. And that's just nonsense. What we really want is to be able to say, here's the PID. Uh, enter it into ICE, and you're done. ICE already knows where it is. Um, so we want to be able to find it by its name, the identifier of the PID. Uh, or we want to be able to map that PID to metadata attributes. So we have some sort of metadata about some entity about you know, the day it was created, uh, the person who created it, and so on. Uh, all those metadata attributes are then mapped back to a PID, and that PID maps back to the object. And we also want to make sure that PIDs are, we want to be able to make sure that any data mapping going back and forth throughout ICE is universal, so that my data in ICE, or maybe even this instance of ICE, so I have the Army Research Lab version of ICE um, that has the Army Research Lab PID server. All these different things going back and forth are totally unique, totally universal, so that we're not ever clashing, so that we don't have any issues of actually finding the data that we're looking for. And most importantly, we want this to be fast, light, and versatile. We want it to work immediately and without any issue. Um, good luck with that. So again, we want to be able to route data across any system. So when I'm querying for some piece of data some with some metadata attributes, uh, I guess the example for today is Titanium 64. Uh, so I'm looking for some uh, metadata attributes about Titanium 64. Enter it into ICE. Um, ICE looks for the metadata. The metadata points to PIDs. And the PIDs point to the exact systems. So that we're not actually going out and saying, hey, Granta, what do you got? Hey, Plotly, what do you got? Hey, Hub, what do you got? We already know where all of that is, because we've indexed it. We're not keeping the data. We're just indexing it. Um, and we also want it to be location agnostic. And what I mean by that is that we never need to worry about where the PID actually points to. Um, and this, again, goes back to the issue of we don't want to have to go out and query each and every individual system. We have this one place, and we have a PID that says the object lives here. And it has this identifier here, or what have you. Um, so 
again, we'll walk through a couple use cases here. So we have a PID that's saved um, locally on some object. So we have a files plugin, and that plugin actually stores a PID on a file as we're going through this. So we have the file upload process. We're uploading some data. On that data, we make an API call and ask for a PID from the common service bus. The common service bus then uh, also takes any metadata and where the, that um, object is going to live, and it stashes it all on the PID server. Now, we save that PID af after it's been issued on that file so that in the future, whenever I want to share that file with someone else, um, or I want to list that file in search or something like that, uh, that PID is associated with that file directly. So we have a different case where we have a unique ID. So for instance, we can't necessarily get some different enterprise software to uh, go ahead and tack on our uh, ICE PIDs onto everything that they create. Um, we just can't expect everyone to play ball like that, and that's okay. Um, instead of uh, storing the location, what we'll store is a unique ID. So we can make an API call to some piece of software, and the API call says that we have this digital object, and our identifier for it is APC. So when we create the PID record for it, what we're doing is instead of saving the location of it, we're saying this lives in some system, Granta for instance, and inside Granta, Granta has the ABC object. ABC is then, um, whenever it creates an object, calls ICE and says, I have object ABC, just letting you know. It doesn't need to keep the PID. So we have that location and metadata information saved again, and we're done. So at that point, all, we need to, all ICE needs to know how to do is contact Granta for that information, and it's there. We don't need to have Granta store the PID. Um, I think this is a powerful uh, example for it. Uh, we have, again, we'll go through the search and querying option again. Uh, so we look for some data on titanium, enter in the search terms, and we call for the PID. And all the PIDs that uh, are associated with the metadata on titanium are then spit back out pretty instantaneously because, again, this all exists on the one PID server. We're not going out and querying every single system. So. We then have the endpoints, how to get to these different systems sent back, and we're done. You can click on the PID, and it says, hey, I have this information that's stored in Granta. We know where it is. We know how to get it. And the user doesn't know anything that's going on in the background. It's pretty simple. So a couple of different ways we can go about this. Um, I already kind of have given it away that we use our own system. But we have a couple options that are off the shelf that I think are really excellent solutions. We can use handles, um, which is just for those who aren't familiar with it, uh, there's a global handle registry, which is this kind of top-down architecture. Um, the global handle registry uh, exists on top of local handle registries, or excuse me, local handle services. And these local handle services, say we can have one um, at a university. This is my local handle service for um, for any local university, like my, I go to Wright State, Wright State can have their own uh, handle service, and that issues out uh, handles for when I submit a paper or something like that, or uh, any digital object at all. And that actually has to register up with the global handle registry. It doesn't work at all without that. Uh, so if I'm inside Wright State University, I'm calling for a uh, handle from some other instance, um, it first pings the local handle service, then it pings the uh, registry, since it doesn't know where it is, and the registry says, oh, you can find that over here at Purdue, for instance. It works pretty well, but inside of a system like uh, Air Force Research Lab, we can't, we can't work with that. Um, all of our systems exist behind a firewall. You can't access them from outside our intranet and a global handle registry would not be able to ping the local handle service, so the entire system does not work, um, sadly. Because this is actually a pretty cool solution. It doesn't require a whole lot of buy-in, and uh, we can actually maintain our own infrastructure with this. Uh, 
So the other option is DOIs. And DOIs, um, we wouldn't have to worry about that because we don't have to maintain our own infrastructure. Um, it exists outside. Um, it, in fact, it is its own um, handle namespace. This is all running on the backbone of the handle services. And we have the same issues, though, with data being pointed to that exists behind an internet and behind a firewall. Um, a lot of our, a lot of de uh, data that's generated inside of the research lab, we can't, like, the titles of them cannot be released. You can't, none of this information is allowed to be public without some sort of release process. Um, so the entire DOI process doesn't, still doesn't fly for us. Um, and we have the issue, we have, do have issues with not owning the infrastructure. Uh, this prevents us from being able to uh, federate directly with them because you're working again with a local handle service which is subservient to somehow both ICE and uh, the global handle registry at the same time and that does not work so well. So again, just to reiterate, um, both of these systems we really wanted to use, we can't for the reasons I outlined before. Um, and I just want to hammer the, these aren't federated part of it. Uh, it's not, it's an ad hoc, or not an ad hoc model. We want to be able to have an ad hoc model so that we can have a local PID service uh, in AFRL, we can have a local PID service in the Navy, um, in a university, anything like that. Anyone who wants to use the PID service can use it without having to be subservient to some uber lord. So what did we choose? Um, we've talked a lot about Django today, Python. Uh, we use Django and Python for pretty much everything, including our PID service. Uh, what we do is we can, uh, it's very simple. You have a simple endpoint that says, I want to create a PID, and you toss it a bunch of metadata, like a name, where it exists, and so on. And you can do this for multiple entries at a time. Um, so you're reducing number of calls. So say I'm creating some sort of experiment and I know that I'm going to have a thousand different artifacts created from this uh, if we sent off a thousand different API requests. And there's also the guy in the lab next to you who's doing the same thing. And uh, it quickly runs out of control and we can't really do that, but we can actually uh, create thousands all at once. Um, we can create, uh, track multiple versions of objects so that you can have PIDs that uh, link back to an old version or a new version so say that I create a research paper that existed on my personal computer and then I uploaded it and someone else took that same paper and they're editing it. Um, we can issue a new PID if we want so that we can uh, track the fact that that old research paper exists and we can go back to it if we need to. But whenever you see that, whenever you're searching for that uh, research paper, it has the entire lineage from beginning to end of, how, of the entire process of that. We also want to have data routing, as I've mentioned. Um, the way this works is that on the PID, we store either a local ID um, and or a uh, URI, some sort of location identifier. So you can have a file system path, or you can have a, um, a web address or something like that. So that when I say this PID, we know it was generated by the hub. So the hub doesn't necessarily need to store PIDs. We just say that it has project ID XYZ and this um, location within the project, and we're done. Um, all that information is stored in the PID and indexed that way. Um, and I'm hesitant to even draw any attention to the uh, ontology service uh, part of this, but uh, a lot of this, is, I think that the main power of this is the ability to map all these different PIDs to all the different metadata we're working with. So that we have our metadata service that it is federated throughout the system. So this one single metadata service within ICE, within different instances of ICE, uh, is responsible for maintaining metadata across all the different services, across all the different users, um, simply by tracking the PIDs. Uh, we could not, it, it's literally impossible to my knowledge to be able to do this um, and maintain any data integrity without having some sort of standard indexing process. So again, uh, just want to reiterate why we chose ICE PIDs. Uh, federation, we're worried about that a lot. 
We want to be able to query these things from outside. So the searching, we want to be able to uh, query from different instances of ice and so on. Uh, we want to have uh, ontologies that span multiple different services and platforms so that we can have this ontology that uh, is controlled over Granta, uh, controlled in the AFRL ICE, in the Navy ICE, in Purdue ICE, and so on. Uh, I think that one of the main takeaways from all this should be that uh, one of the most important things we get from a lot of our users, they ha there's a lot of backlash from trying to take over data. If we tried to ingest all of this data into one gigantic, um, the term is data lake, uh, that would, first of all, be a gigantic process that I don't think any of us really want to go through. And there's also the issue of the users don't want to uh, get rid of, or they don't want to lose their data. They don't want to give it up to someone else. They want to still maintain control over this. I think that that's what this version of um, persistent identification allows us to do, is that uh, we still index it, but the user still has control as to what happens with it. That data still exists within the individual systems. Uh, when I create a granta record for some sort of material, that granta record is still owned by the user who created it, um, even though we know where it is and how to get to it. Um, you don't have to worry about any of that. Um, and as I mentioned when I was talking about how this works with ontologies, I really don't think that we could do any sort of data mapping just based on location. It has to be first class name base. And it, I think that Another main important point is that uh, working with light and simple solutions is probably the best way to go about this. Uh, when we talk about PIDs, you think that it's some sort of gargantuan monster that has all these different things and can uh, you know, clean your dishes and uh, wash your clothes and stuff like that. It's not. It's just a simple uh, JSON object that exists inside of a server uh, that tells you where things are. And You'd think it's a lot more complicated than that, but it's not. And it's, this is what you need in order to get all of this stuff accomplished, though. It all This is the linchpin. Uh, and again, something that we're having issues with is someday when we have millions of calls going on constantly, uh, you can't just distribute this out. Uh, this is a serious scale problem of indexing. But it's something that I think we're going to, this is the best solution to my knowledge. Um, and that's about it. Um, any questions regarding persistent identifiers? Question? I have one. <laughs> <laughs> um, what, uh, what are you using um, to store the persistent identifiers or for your indexing? Is it MongoDB? Mm -hmm. Is it MySQL? What's, what's under the hood? Right now we're using, excuse me, MySQL. Um, been toying with the idea of MongoDB, but uh, there was a lot of excitement over that a few years ago, and I've started to uh, read a lot of articles about MongoDB that are very, very scary to me. Um, so we're still exploring that. I think MongoDB would be pretty cool, but still exploring it. Okay. Other questions? All right. Thank you, Kevin. Thanks. <laughs>